How do you go from flat, lifeless photographs to a photograph with depth, dynamics, and vibrancy? Hey everybody, John Peterson here, and in today's video I want to talk to you about depth. Depth in your images. And I think depth is an extremely important topic to think about as a landscape photographer especially. We have this wonderful, expansive, wide open world that we're photographing. But yet when we look at our image files, they seem flat and shallow. So what are some things that you can do to bring back some depth to your images? I want to show you a couple of in camera things to think about. And then I want to walk you through a few tips in post processing to bring back some of that depth. Right here we go taking a look at a few images with some techniques that you might be able to practice when you're in the field on location composing your photograph. And one of the first techniques that I'll talk about is this uh, using compositional elements to create that sense of depth. Now you all know that, that in every photograph we have a foreground, a midground, and a background, and a sky typically. That's great. You can use those in, in and of themselves to, to sort of relay a sense of depth. But what I like to do sometimes is have a really strong foreground subject that anchors the scene. And then in this case, notice that I have this dark, heavy object to the right. So our eyes naturally go there. We're traveling further back. And then I've got this dark object and our eyes travel here. And then I've got this massive object. And so th hip hopping through these different objects, I have an unconscious or a subconscious feeling of a sense of depth that I'm moving backwards or deeper into the frame. So visually, just through the positioning of elements, I could create a sense of depth. Similarly, I've got this shot here from Bandon, and what makes this a little bit different is I've got this really large rock that's taking up a huge amount of the foreground. I've got this massive rock in the background. It's not big, but it's you know that it's sizable. But I've got all this water motion that gives a sense of space and a sense of traveling, which adds to our sense of depth. Okay, so finding a foreground subject using some of the things around you can help bring that depth back. Now, if we look at a shot of Christine Falls, this is up on Mount Rainier, and this is the first composition that I shot. I liked it, it was nice, but it looked kind of flat. It looked kind of flat because I don't have a lot of river down here. I had to leave enough space up here and it, the scene just didn't feel 100% right. So my other tip for you is to maybe change the orientation of your camera. Let's go look vertically and look at this. Now I've got this huge line leading up that adds to the sense of depth in the image. So moving from a horizontal to vertical allowed me to elongate this compositional element, which added to my sense of depth in the shot. Not to mention I go all the way back here to this little bridge and it just feels like a much, much deeper three dimensional type of image. There are some times, you know, where I don't want a lot of depth and I will find subjects that are close to the background. You know, in this case, this cactus was really close to this yellow wall. It created a beautiful contrast. And I'm using the light and shadows as a tool to give a sense of depth and roundness to the cactus. You can see the shadows here, the light over here. That's the only depth element that I'm using. And up in the Palouse, 
it's a lot it's very similar to death valley very similar to some of the desert southwest if you would see the um the raw file for this you would see how flat it was but now here is the key is recognizing landscapes like this that could be brought out in post-processing and the whole way that i have a sense of depth in this shot is the use of light and dark I've got these light ridge tops, light here, light here, light here, light here. And then I've got shadows, shadow. I've got shadows running here, shadows running here, shadows running here. These are absolutely critical to give our brains the enough information to see shape and to see depth. We use the differences between lights and darks to, to process the world around us to give us that sense of depth and to give us that sense of dimension um, and just just process the visual information around us so lights and darks are the way that i can add depth in my photographs in post-processing so now that we've looked at a few techniques that you can practice in camera and when you're in the field choosing compositions, looking for the relationship of the elements, the camera orientation, different things like that that you can do. Now let's take a look at what you can do in post-processing to create more sense of depth in your image. So now let's take a look at some techniques and tips that you can use in the digital darkroom to give flat images some depth and dimension and let me just say that that as your eye gets more developed you'll be able to see potential out in the field now you know as an example this image that we're looking at here this was shot at the petrified forest in uh, new mexico and kind of middle of the day the light was nasty and it normally wouldn't be a great shot but this is one that I knew that I would be able to transform with a few simple tips in Lightroom. You know, I can see the folds of the landscape. I can see potential shadow areas and potential highlight areas. So I went ahead and I took this shot and I want to go through and develop this just real quickly for you to show you what I mean. Now, first off, look at the histogram. Notice the histogram is very well centered right in the middle. Um, I don't have a lot of deep shadows. I don't have a lot of bright highlights. It's all full of midtones. And what I want to do to give some depth to this shot is to spread that histogram out a little bit. I want to have some deeper shadows and some brighter highlights. Overall, that's what I want. And then I want to go in and target a few selected areas to further enhance the sense of depth in this shot. So what I could do is, is to help spread that uh, histogram a little bit, I could go and add some contrast into the image. Not bad. You know, when I do something like that, if I go up to, you know, uh, I don't want to go too much. Let's go to 20, 21, 21 to 25 might be okay. And this provides contrast across the entire image. Another way to do this is working on the blacks and then working on the whites. You can see I did not get as much contrast, but I still have a really pleasing effect. Because it was really dusty out there too, I know that there was some atmospheric haze. And so another trick for adding contrast into the image is using the dehaze slider. Now texture clarity and dehaze all add some form of contrast to get that presence that each slider is going for and they do them all very differently. Dehaze adds a contrast more in the mid-range of uh, of your photograph the the mid-tone values so if i bring this up a little bit let's just go to let's yeah let's just go right there about 25 in the on the dehaze slider that looks really nice it cut some of the atmospheric haze it started to bring out some of the shadows and the highlights 
I can augment that with a little bit more blacks to deepen up those shadows some little bit of highlights to get those curves going now look at that in just a real quick little bit we've gone from a flat washed out image to a shot that has some shadows some highlights and some real semblance of depth to it now the next thing I might do to a shot like this I don't really want to work on color that much right now but let's could just let's just add a little bit of vibrance we'll get this to a starting point now in Lightroom one of the best ways to go in and make targeted adjustments is with a mask tool and you select the brush so if I go to mask and brush this is how I'm going to start the work. In Photoshop, I'll use a dodge layer and a burn layer to do the same effect. But in Lightroom, let's just work on the shadows first. So I'm going to start with a very low flow, let's just say about 15, very high feather. And I'm going to go in and start painting in some of these areas where there are shadows, where I can see these sort of darker areas, where I know that there's folds in the landscape, where I know that um, the sunlight falls off a little bit. These are the areas that I want to darken just a little bit. So if I come on the back side of this, let's just work down in this corner. I don't want to work too much on the foreground because I will be adding a vignette to this at the very end. But let me just go through and do some of this. So I think I've kind of hit most of the little shadow, the gully areas that I want to darken. So let me go ahead and slide the exposure. So if I go all the way down, you can see, you can see what it does. It gets really dark and really almost obnoxious. But let me just drop it down, you know, maybe a stop. And then in that same mask, I might darken the blacks just a little bit. So we went from that to that that to that now I want to do the same thing but with the highlights so again I'll go up to mask brush I'm gonna keep the same flow and feather I am maybe gonna raise the uh, brush size up a little bit and what I'm looking to do is to highlight any of the ridges the ridge tops where I know I'm getting direct sunlight because I want to make just those areas stand out from the shadowed areas around them. And again, what this is going to do is, is it's going to really bring out the folds and the curves of the landscape. And I'll go through and finish this off. And, and here I'll take my exposure slider and I'll, I'll crank it all the way up. And you can see what it does. But I don't want to go that far. Let's go up. Maybe a stop and a quarter, and I'm going to boost my whites a little bit. Boom. So for highlights, we went from that to that. So overall, now you can see the depth and the shape of this landscape. You know, I went from this to this. I went from a very flat, washed out, to an image that has, I can feel these gullies and the folds in the landscape real quick real easy dodging and burning the shadows and the highlights then just to finish it off I might do a little bit of color work you know boost the colors a little bit I'm gonna come down to the blue slider add a little bit of that the last thing that I want to do to create depth is you see this little bit of background right up top here I I had to include it because I wanted the top of this orange mountain but I don't want it as bright as it is so what I might do is add another mask. I'll do a linear gradient up here. But notice that my linear gradient uh, intersects the top of that hillside that I don't want masks. So I want to subtract. And I'm going to go, let's try objects. Because this is a very definitive ridge line. I want to see if Lightroom will take out the tops of these ridges. I think it did a really good job. There's just a couple of little areas that I want to fix, like right in there. I'm going to get my flow back up right in there. 
and right up in here it didn't do a great job but now I have got the top of this ridge line pretty well isolated so I can darken that background a little bit and by darkening that background it, it again helps aid this sense of depth to the image then the last thing I do to 99% of my images is I add a vignette and for this purpose I'll just use the vignette tool the other way to do a vignette is to do a radial gradient um, if you've not seen that trick you know you can do a radial gradient about yay big I can invert it uh, no I want to leave it the way it is um, Invert it and really what this doing is just darkening the edges just a little bit I can play around with this and change the size and shape of the of the radial gradient all I want But what I'm trying to do is sort of quiet the borders of the of the image So people are more directed into the middle of the shot So there you have it real quick, you know, we've gone from we've gone from this really simple basic shot to one with a lot of depth and dimension to it. All right, well, there you have it. There's a few ideas of how to create some depth in your photographs. If you like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe, like, do all that kind of great stuff. Helps my channel out. Stay tuned for the next video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description down below. Thanks for watching and have a great day. All right, bye-bye.